is in this meeting, for those who have prepared for this night, uh, we've just had a glorious time opening the meeting with the worship team and they have much, much more for you, but they've really set the tone because we can just all feel the presence of the Holy Ghost and it's something that we can never take for granted that every time we congregate, we come together, God comes through. And I was planning to continue with the book of Jeremiah, but I have been inspired by the worship team. They've changed the direction of things. But I just want us to talk about, in times of battle, when you can see the enemy waging war, when you can see the enemies coming, what is the best way of preparing? And how does God want you to prepare? And you know, the interesting thing is when we can see war coming, uh, when sometimes you can just, you can feel it sometimes, or you can begin to see, and sometimes even as I, I, the Holy Spirit was just reminding me of this chapter, he was telling me about some people who you know at around April or a certain month, say August, everything goes wrong in your family. Uh, and this is something that the Lord wants to end. There are certain months, you know, in your family, everything goes wrong. It is the month where many people die. It is the month where people lose jobs. And as I had shared earlier, this year is going to be a very tough year. And May was, is going to be, I feel like saying was, because it feels like May is actually even over. And we are even preparing for next month. And part of the reason even why we are spending much more time with God is because we knew what the enemy wanted to do in the month of May. And a lot of people have shared, uh, today I was just speaking to a lot of people who have been going through so much warfare. And as I shared, I told you, Issachars go through a lot of warfare. In fact, Issachars would always lead when it comes to, it came to war, they would lead from the front. They were never afraid. And you can imagine how worse it was for them because they knew what was coming. Uh, and they always knew the best way to prepare is to be at the front line. And so even when we know the things that are coming, we always have to be at the front line. And we see in Isaiah chapter 8, let's just go to Isaiah chapter 8. And in Isaiah chapter 8, we see that uh, there was going to be an invasion uh, against Syria and Israel by the Assyrians. And Isaiah was preparing the people, preparing them for God's judgment and preparing them for the invasion, for the war, for the battle that was going to come. And we see even a description from verse 5 to 10 about the great affliction that they were about to go through. But I won't read that so much. We've been uh, talking about that even in the book of Jeremiah. But I want us to go to verse 11 to see how Judah, Isaiah, Isaiah was trying to uh, prepare them on how to get ready for an invasion, how to get ready for a fight, how to get ready for war. Because by this time they knew this one is coming. We cannot escape it. We cannot escape uh, the invasion. And it says from verse 11, For the Lord spoke to me with a strong hand and instructed me what I should not walk in the way of a conspiracy concerning all that these people call a conspiracy. Nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts, whom ye shall hallow, let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the house of Israel as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble. They shall fall and be broken, be snared and taken. And Isaiah was uh, telling the people that uh, they should not give in to fear they should not give in into panic. And when we know things are not going to be good, and this is the thing, 
when we know that or when we're in a situation that is difficult you have to make a choice am I going to be led by fear or am I going to be led by the truth the choice is yours will you fear or will you be of good courage standing on the truth and that is why they were being told that they should not get into conspiracy and the interesting thing about human beings, anytime there is a problem, I don't know why, everybody wants to come up with a solution or tell you how the story happened. In fact, I was reading a certain story about how someone was explaining an accident that so-and-so died, they were driving, then they slept. I was wondering, Sasa, they died. Who told you they slept in the car? How did you come up with that conclusion? Can we wait and hear from the police? But every time something bad happens, human beings like to come up with many ideas of what must have happened. And people can sit in barazas and talk and talk about it. And everybody says, are ah, you, you are not right. Me, I think this is what happened. And sometimes people, even you see people fighting because they want their truth to be the only truth. And also a lot of times, uh, like in communications, we are taught that if something bad has happened, you have to communicate quickly. Because what happens if you don't communicate, people begin to have stories that they will spread around. And also sometimes when we are going through difficult times, our mind, if you do not guard yourself, your mind can begin to give you different explanations. Oh, maybe God has deserted you. God has forgotten you. How come everyone around you is doing so well, but you're the only one who is not doing well? How come you fasted uh, last week and you're going through these problems? How come the evil one are doing well and you're not doing well? For how long, God? God, why do you hate me. Sometimes I meet people and they say, Aki, God hates me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, fine. Show me where in scripture it says that God can hate somebody. But it's because of what you are going through at that time that your mind begins to have different stories, conspiracy. And he was telling them, do not get into any conspiracy, do not get into any fear and attack. And you know, even as he was, uh, Isaiah was talking to them and giving them this prophecy, the combined armies of Israel and Syria had destroyed much of Judah. And their armies encircled Jerusalem, and some were even uh, more were also coming on their way. And they planned to dispose King Ahaz of Judah and set their own man on the throne. You see that even in Isaiah chapter 7. And now Isaiah's prophecy declared the armies of Syria and Israel would not succeed in conquering Judah. But the Assyrians, who they actually trusted to help them, would attack them and do damage in the midst of all this. And it would be easy to just let your heart or your mind settle on conspiracies and threats. But God was telling them not to do so. The Lord of hosts, whom ye shall hallow, let him be your fear. And in those times, your fear should only be God, that you fear God. Not fearing men. Not thinking about the different threats and coming up with other ideas. But fearing God. And don't see yourself at the mercy of opposing armies. You are in God's hand and your eyes should only be focused on that. Worry about your place with the Lord. When you're going through battle, worry more about where do I stand with God instead of your enemies. And you will begin to notice as you worry more about that, that your problems begin to look very small. One of the best ways when you're going through warfare, one method that I have learned that I think is my way of escaping. Before I used to escape through eating. When I'm going through distress, I'd go buy chocolate. In fact, when I buy it, before I get out of the store, I want to open it and just eat it. And then I feel the sweetness and I'm escaping. But now I learned a different way. I can see some people behind there laughing. <laughs> but I learned a new way of escaping. And what I do is I just put worship. 
and I put my focus back on God. And the first song, sometimes you just are like, let me just sing, but the problem is still there. The phone is even ringing. But when you learn to focus and worry more about where do you stand with God, when your fear is the fear of the Lord and not the fear of your enemies, your problems become a small problem. I have seen it in my life. In fact, the problem is still there, but my eyes focus on something else and I realize, in fact, sometimes people are the ones who come to ask you, you're not worried? I, you're, are you okay? I, and you're like, you do know my God. Do you know God? Let me tell you, there are many problems when we face them. If you truly, truly, truly know God, then those problems look like they are nothing. Sometimes I suspect that when Daniel was in the lion's den, I suspect how God shut the mouth of those lions. Is that lion that Daniel sat there with those lions, and because he knew God, he was so courageous and comfortable. Even the lions now started suspecting him, and they were afraid of him. They are like, "Hey, we are all of us here, and you are just seated there." Because you don't read that Daniel was screaming and Daniel knew God. And Daniel sat there and, and it makes sense because when you watch Masai is taking food <laughs> from lions, I'm like, this is the kind of boldness Daniel must have had there. And because of the fear that Daniel had for God, and we see it from Daniel chapter 1, when he sat there with the lions, his focus was on God and not the lions. And I suspect, actually, it is the lions that feared Daniel. Because they could see his, he fears something bigger. And so to him, the lions were nothing. How many of us, if we were Daniel and we were put in the lion's den, would begin to say, God, you're not a true God. And by the time now you begin to behave that way, crying, the, the lions will swallow you quickly. Because when you begin to lose focus, when you begin to fear other things, that is when the enemy takes you down. You actually open the door for him. And we actually, when you think about it, you open it because you're sinning. We are commanded many times in scripture not to fear. And you always see in scripture when God was talking to great men, one of the things he would always repeat is to tell them, do not fear, for I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I don't know why we begin to imagine when there is trouble that at the same way you are running helter skelter that God has also run away. In, what you're, in essence, what you're telling God is that this problem, God, is bigger than you. And I believe more in this problem than you, God. But instead, even at that time, our fear should only be the fear of God. And to know that he will be as a sanctuary. That the Lord will be our sacred place and our place of protection. And he's the only one who can keep us safe. The only one. The only one. And one of the interesting things I've come to learn as sharing with someone who I really was feeling like God is testing them. Great men, and by this I mean women, God must take you through a test where you will learn it is only God. It is only God. In times of trouble, only God. Good times, only God. But they, if you ever hear somebody who makes that statement, only God, they didn't learn it just from the Bible. They learned it from going through difficult times. And the only solution, the only one who could help them was God. And learning that lesson is so important. When you're troubled, you know only God. He is my sanctuary. But a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. For those who trust the Lord, the Lord will be as a sanctuary. But for those who don't, he will be a stone stumbling and a rock of offense. And instead of finding protection from the Lord, they will trip over him. That's what that scripture is saying. And you, as you trip, you will fall into destruction. You will not see correctly. Instead of running 
to God, you will stumble. And, and that is one place the enemy is usually waiting for you to stumble. Even Job, when, when the enemy saw Job is not stumbling, he sent friends to tell him, curse your God. He sent his wife. So always know when trouble is coming, you will ever know God as your sanctuary. Or you will find him as the one who made you stumble. You will be so angry. But actually you are the one who will have stumbled on your own. Because you didn't know how to approach God. And many a times when men are in trouble, some people decide to see God as their enemy. And not the only one who can save them. And you begin to cry and tell God, how can you do this to me? Why would you do this to me? Some people say, after that, I left God. I didn't go to church for one year. I never wanted to hear the name of God. And when there, when there is trouble, I don't know why people hate God. Begin to ask, where was God? Where was God? God was there. But did you embrace him? Did you see him as your sanctuary? Did you see him as the only one who can save you? Did you still see him as God or your problem? And we see in verse 16 how to truly, truly prepare for warfare. And it's an interesting way. We prepare by waiting on the Lord. Verse 16, it says, Bind up the testimony, seal the law among the disciples, and I will wait on the Lord who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Here I am, and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are signs and wonders in Israel from, from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Zion. And Isaiah was talking about something that is so hard during problems, to wait. <laughs> the funny thing when we are panicking, when somebody is even having a panic attack or somebody is stressed, we tell someone, relax, relax. And they're like, I don't know how to relax. And you telling me relax is making things worse. And you tell someone, breathe in. They can't even breathe in slowly like you. They're just, I can't, I can't. You're making things worse. And here is, the, is Isaiah telling us, in times of battle, wait on the Lord. And waiting on the Lord does not mean you are just seated. It means to wait on him almost like a waiter. Waiting on a table. Therefore, it means when you, when, when you go to a restaurant and you, there's a waiter there serving you, you get irritated when you see waiters at a certain corner. All of them, they're just talking their stories. Their head is not even facing you. You have to keep on calling them. You have to keep on going there. If you want to add something extra at the table, you have to go and call them. You're almost like, what is the use of having this waiter? Waiting on the Lord means that you are attentive very attentive to the Lord if you're not attentive as a waiter to your clients they will be irritated in fact they can cancel the whole order if they have to wait for you for 10 minutes they are not the ones to wait it is the waiter who is meant to wait and when we are going through a troubled time it is not for God to wait for you it is for you to wait on the Lord. It is for you to listen to how God wants you to handle that matter. Do you know that any time you're going through warfare, it is an opportunity for God to show off who he is or an opportunity for Satan to show off who he is. And the interesting thing is, the choice is yours. Will you show off Satan? show fear show doubt and all the signs of satan which include death destruction panic fear 
or will you show off the power of God? And, and that is one thing every time I, I try and remind myself, I know it is not easy. And these are some of the things you need to learn how to write somewhere and to go through them when you're panicking that this is time for God to show off his power. And I always tell God, show off your power through this problem that I am going through. I will be totally attentive. And that's the time Satan wants to come and tell you, come to the corner like you see waiters sometimes. Come to the corner, I tell you something. Do you know that you can help God? Sarah, Sarah, help your husband, help God. And there's a scripture people say, even the Bible says, God helps who help themselves. I've never seen that scripture. It is not there. There is no scripture like that. We stay attentive to hear. And the enemy will try and come and tell you lies so that you don't stay attentive. And focus on God. And learn how to be responsive to every desire that God has. A waiter, if you tell the waiter, bring me water, they'll bring. If you tell the waiter, ah, excuse me, by the way, bring me juice. They'll go and bring, they'll not say, ah, finish your water and then now I'll bring your juice. Ah, you've just sent me a minute ago, how can you send me again? They respond to every will and wish that you have. In fact, sometimes I watch waiters, I'm like, hey, those, are, those ones are very good waiters. If it was me, hi. <laughs> sometimes, in a, one time I sat in a restaurant, I saw how some customers were talking to a, to a waiter. I, 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 had, I could not hold myself, I had to go say, excuse me, that is so wrong, this is a human being, how dare you? But the waiter was like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, madam, I will handle. I'm like, no, no, this is wrong. But the waiter was smiling. I'm like, even why are you smiling? <laughs> we fight together here. But in that time, as much as perhaps you actually have the right, learn how to be still, Listen to God and respond to every will of God. If at that time God says, be patient, I will speak eventually. Be patient. If the Lord says, that one person who is fighting you, show them love, show them love. It's like in the book of Jeremiah. I, I, I'm still on Jeremiah's behalf asking God, I but God surely. Jeremiah had not sinned. Then in chapter 17, you come and tell him to live like eh, and to show off your signs. Actually, chapter 16. And you tell him not to marry, not to attend parties. And this was some of the last parties Israel was going to have before they were captured. Jeremiah had not sinned. How can you tell him that? But Jeremiah had learned how to be attentive and give to everything that God asked for. And it is very hard to give to the desires of God when you're feeling like God is not answering your prayer requests. When you're feeling like you're receiving battles that you, for things you have not done. But this is the strategy. And so you're inactive but you are active in a different way. In not the ways human think, beings sometimes think we should be active during warfare. And we are totally focused at that time on God. And he says, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And waiting on the Lord is connected it is connected on his word. We can wait on the Lord by waiting on his word. In fact, it's so funny. There are scriptures when I read, they remind me of what I was going through and how that scripture sailed me through. And they are beautiful scriptures because they are scriptures that when somebody is also going through trouble, you tell them, you know, when there was a time I was going through a difficult time. This scripture sailed me through. And funny thing, scriptures that we read during hard times, we never forget them. And they are so powerful. And you're like, yes! Yes, yes, you never forget them. And in fact, that's the time as you read scripture, you are crying even. And you feel that word has broken you. 
In fact, if you, if you actually do warfare properly, you will notice you grew so much during that time of warfare. And that is why children of God, a lot of times, if they are working correctly, will never regret warfare. And they say, thank you, God, for that thing you took me through. This is where I grew. And with every warfare, if you look at it carefully and in a very objective way, you will come to see that you grew. And it was for your advantage. And it built your character. And there are many things you, and you learned about God. That is where sometimes you see, people, let me tell you, look at people when we are singing Jehovah Sabaoth. The ones who you see who are singing that song, eh? with dancing, and as we know Jehovah Sabaoth. We can draw for you, we can tell you, we can sing that song for 10 hours non-stop. I'm never tired, I can see people really nodding, of singing Jehovah. We have seen Jehovah Sabaoth, we know him, and he does not play. And he came when he, we least expected he came even and we learned Kumbe God is not one to joke with. Growing up, I never knew Jehovah Sabawot. Until one day, hey, there was warfare. I learned Jehovah Sabawot and I saw him come. And Jehovah Sabawot does not leave anything standing. He sweeps and cuts everything for you. And it leaves you knowing God in a different way, loving God in a deeper way. After I met Jehovah Sabawot, nobody can remove me from God. And you only see Jehovah Sabaoth during tough times. He does not come when your business is making profit and everything you're eating cake and enjoying life. And that is the, in fact, when you really connect with Jehovah Sabaoth because he came during your most painful and vulnerable time. Enjoy when you're going through pain. You will see God in a way you never saw God. If people tell you Jehovah Sabaoth and teach it to you, you will be so bored. Wait until one day you enter warfare with him. Hey, hey, I fear God. When I say I fear God, it is after watching Jehovah Sabaoth. And he's not somebody you want to go against. I, I shudder when I see people going against God. Jehovah Sabawot is, and he, by the way, he does not come alone. Another full army comes, and all of them are just carrying swords with fire. Nothing remains, even grass, you will not see it. And by the time he's done, everybody knows your God is the true and living God. I know now some of you are saying, Sibasi ni pitia kashida ni mitu yu Jehovah Sabawot. You will never meet him during good times. In fact, when you meet Jehovah Sabawot, you'll be like, I know God is my provider. Like in here, Sabawot. I fear. And so during that time, read scripture. Wait reading scripture. Waiting on the Lord is so connected with his word. And even for us to have faith, it comes from reading scripture. And we see in verse 19, it says that, prepare, uh, and when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards who whisper and mutter. But they here, I know Africa. I know Africans are connecting with this international students uh, and other people. And I know here you're not getting it. Uh, but for my African people, oh God. To not go to see uh, ritualists at night. This is what Isaiah is telling them from verse 19. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wiz wizards who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. They will pass through it hard pressed and hungry, and it shall be, and it shall happen when they are hungry that they will be enraged and cast their king and their God and look upward. Then they will look to the earth and see trouble and darkness, gloom and anguish. They, and they will be driven into darkness. 
And you see in the present danger from Syria and Israel and in the coming danger from Assyria, Judah will be, was tempted to seek guidance and comfort from wizards and mediums. I see people, uh, uh, reality shows for mediums. And one time another Christian told me, I was watching because I've realized this medium, you know, they have a prophetic gift. And uh, to, I like the way some human beings imagine things are modern. That uh, mediums have a gift. It is a godly gift. It is actually, yes, a gift that they were given by God, but have allowed Satan. Their source now has become Satan. That is the difference. Their source is a very... In fact, when, if they give their life to Christ, they will make some of the best prophets. My people in Ukambani, hello, hello. My people in Ukambani make good prophets. And it, we are always tempted sometimes when things are tough. Because we are promised if you perhaps see a medium, your problem will be solved immediately. Now here is God telling you to wait on him. Nikonashida, landlord and agonga mlango. Sasa, do I go see a witch doctor? who will finish my issue right now and people will come and tell you wakina jo umeokoka but tusaidiane hapa hata mungu, mungu eventually atakusaidia but for now let's go human beings like easy answers and the enemy usually wants you to jump the process if you notice even Jesus Christ was not born today and tomorrow died for our sins there is a process to things and during that time, character is being built. Don't jump the process. Because your character is being built. Your testimony. In fact, a lot of times God wants to give you even a bigger testimony. I thank the Lord some of the things I prayed for. They took long. And halfway there, I met major challenges. It makes your testimony even sweeter. In fact, if somebody just comes and tells you, hey, or a movie, you notice how movies, you, you know at the end of this movie, Maria and, what is a nice me Mexican name? Eh? Alejandro. Yeah, you know at the end of this, eh? Maria and Alejandro will marry. Even they show you, uh, uh, when the show is starting, they show you their wedding uh, ka video. But you will watch 120 series of Maria suffering, people coming between Maria and Alejandro. That is what makes that story sweet. Eh? And at the end, when you finally see Maria and Alejandro getting married, you are crying. If Maria and Alejandro, and even I like how they open doors for 20 minutes, shwee, you're wondering, Peren, who is opening that door? Will a phone call come through and that door be open? We will sit and watch a hundred and end Aki tunajua watamari. We know. Si tunajua at the end. So we see it even at the beginning. And then the day now we finally watch now the wedding we are crying. Hey, the things they went through. Hey, it is a beautiful wedding. It is so nice. Hey, they deserve it. And you are watching all the enemies of Maria and Alejandro in the corner. And you know what they did to Maria and Alejandro. So you are happy. Hey, you are laughing. Hey, watch our watch. Maria, you are so happy. That process is what makes you appreciate Alejandro and Maria's wedding. I can see the people who watch Mexican Harper. If, do you know if Jesus Christ came on a Monday and died for us on a Tuesday, a lot of us will not accept salvation. I don't know why you want people to believe your testimony and you don't want to go through it. I don't know why you want to be called a great man of God and you don't want to go through the process. When problems come, you want to quickly go to see a wizard. You want to cut corners. You want to seek mediums instead of seeking God. When you're in trouble, we should seek God. Because let me tell you something. 
some of our closest friends, like now I'm looking at Minister Sally. I think the reason why we are close with Minister Sally and nobody can come between us, hey, we've gone through things and come out, we have testimonies. The reason why I, I can never uh, break up with Minister Amani, we have testimonies. We've seen each other from when we were kids in school. We've experienced life. Na sitaki atobwe stories angu. Afadhali tukai friends. And even her, tukiachana na eza atobwe. We have, we have a history. We have experiences. We've journeyed together. There is another friendship that me and her have that I can't have with just anybody. We've seen each other from kids. And allow yourself and God to go through that journey. Don't allow Satan to lie to you. Let's cut shortcuts. Because the problem is, if you keep on taking shortcuts, you will not know how to have a strong and mature relationship with God. When I say me, I know God. Hey, it's deep. It's me, I know God. I, I, I know what it means to sleep on the floor, crying, weeping, and God removes you from that floor and answers your prayer in ways you never expected. I know how sometimes I have sinned and God still covered me and did for me what I don't deserve. We've walked together. I know how I have gone through problems and was so angry with God. I told him terrible things. He loved me through all the time. I told him terrible things. I told him I'll not go to church and saw me until the end of that process. And I fell in love with him even more. A lot of times when you hear couples who have been together for a long time, when you ask them what is the secret, you see them, it's like they are looking back and they are remembering from day one when they hooked up and the various experiences they've had together. And that is what has made their bond stronger. People say, I want to know God. Yeah, but when you're in trouble, you want to run away from God. You want a shortcut. And if you can't rely on your God when you're in trouble, then what good is your God? What good is your God? Yeah. What good is your God if he's not the one you can run to? And we see this even in relationships. Sometimes you sit and you just ask someone, Aki, what value do you add in my life? What good are you in my life? What good is your God if you cannot run to him? Learn how to run to him. And that is why you ask somebody, you do you really know God? Are you truly born again? Because in time of trouble, the things you say about God, you don't know God. And what sense does it make to seek the dead on behalf of the living when you're seeking witchcraft? And I know in Kenya especially, we like pretending we don't do those things. But instead we go to certain men of God who will throw water, dashes of water on you and you will pay a few thousands of dollars. That is witchcraft. We are very good in that in Kenya. At least other countries people are accept we go to Sangomas. In Kenya, hey, we, don't, where? we don't do those things. And even people want to see modern witch doctors and you call them pastor. A witch is a witch. People who go against the word of God, a witch is a witch. And a lot of people are trying to really force men and women of God to begin to behave like witches. Give me a word. What word is the Lord saying? Here is $5,000. It's so interesting. I was sharing with a few people here that I don't know why of late. People are just bringing things to rig money in exchange of, we don't want your money. And don't come trying to coin, coin, coin things in a different way so that we accept your money or your gifts. We don't want. And when you try, we see right through you. I will never be a witch. And to begin to take money and to do things that God 
has not said is to begin to practice being a witch. To seek the dead on behalf of the living. To begin to live for mammon, for money, dead currencies. To actually visit witch doctors and shrines. I was seeing people, um, a witch who was talking about how many pastors go to visit that witch. How we see politicians and people actually believe in the political system. You cannot win an election without having a witch somewhere that people go to visit. There is no reason to seek the dead. There is no reason to seek what is dead. And you know, this passage also expresses the foolishness of praying to the saints. <laughs> Of praying to the saints. Why seek the dead to handle things of the living? And that is why he tells them, forget. To the law and to the testimony. Forget about mediums and wizards and the dead. Instead of all deception and foolishness to the law and to the testimony. Go for God's word. And let me even say this, instead of running after men and women of God, run to God's word. I don't know what is that thing you actually believe a mere man can do for you that God cannot do. I don't know why we don't rush to the Holy Spirit and we want to rush to a man or a woman of God. Do you know that same energy that you put running after them, writing them long messages, sending them gifts, and doing all kind of funny things just so that our prayer can be answered. If you put that effort in God, you will be surprised. Because whatever you want the man of God to tell you, he will only be told some things by the Holy Spirit. And it will not go very deep for you, by the way. They will just say, okay, let me pray for you. The Holy Spirit maybe will give them two lines. You will probably pray for 10 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. But you can go deep for 30 hours. And in that process, get to know God better. So let us seek God. Let us seek his word. And even at the end it says, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If there is a disagreement between God's word and the word of a messenger, that is not God's word and you should run away from it. And you are entering into darkness. And one of the things I've come to realize about the enemy, this is how he's his, his ways of doing things he, he will steal from you he will steal you are going through a troubled time but he will make sure that troubled time comes so that he can steal from you he will steal your sight how you see God he will steal your hearing you will stop hearing from God you will begin then after that and this is how you die you begin to believe things opposite scripture and do things opposite scripture. That's when you die. Sometimes people think dying in that part where we know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. You think to kill is just that. You die physically. It's not that way because how we live and destroy you. It is that you begin to accept things outside scripture and leave those things. You are dead. Anything outside scripture, you are dead. And then there is where you open up completely for him to destroy you and he's waiting for you to open up completely how does he destroy he comes for the generations after you you he's done with you you are dead you live in religion you are dead nobody who lives in religion is alive because living in religion you can you don't have life and life in abundance have you ever seen anybody living in religion and they have life in abundance they don't so there Satan has now killed you and now he wants to go for your children and your children's children. So how do you prepare for war? Be still 
and know that I am God. Wait on God. Be that waiter. Listening only to God. Watching only God. Wanting to please God. Giving God everything that he's asking for. Until God is fully satisfied. And let me tell you, when a waiter is so good, you sometimes can give them a tip more than what you've spent in that hotel. In fact, you ask them, hey, give me your impersa number. Hey, you just love them. You, uh, even some you want to I pray and prophesy for others. They make you feel so good. You even eat more. You even want to know them and you ask them their name and you tell them, next time Mikikuja wepe kendi unisav, nisione mtu mwingine. There is a way you can wait on God. He will finish that war for you. He'll put even an extra tip. He will accept your sacrifice, finish your enemies, overturn everything and let people know this is my daughter, this is my son. Don't ever try that again. And my hand is on them. And after that you go, even, uh, go through a promotion and you begin to realize you are truly carrying the power of God like never before. In fact, one of the things after warfare, ensure you are now carrying God in a different way. He tips you. Tips you with anointing. Tips you with his favor. And there are times you just see a waiter, you'll just eat and pay your bill, but you can go through warfare and that is all that happens. God will just see you through, but the choice is yours. Ensure your warfare will be a great testimony that you carry God. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have taught us today from the book of Isaiah. Of how to go through battles. I pray Lord for everyone that is watching and have carried the spirit of fear. Let them have an encounter with the Lion of Judah and be more like him. To never fear, but to see warfare as a promotion. Warfare as a time to improve skills. Warfare as a time to learn how to pray. Warfare as a time to go deeper into scripture and to discover God like never before. Warfare as a time to prove that there is a God and he always, always delivers victory. Because Jesus Christ finished it at the cross. Father, we want to exchange right now the spirit of fear for your spirit. That we will never fear. That our eyes will always be on you. And Father, I pray even at this time that as much as many people are going through warfare, we will be like those during the Nehemiah's time. They built with one hand and the other hand they had a sword. But by the enemy will never stop us from the work you have given us. From the assignment you have given us to occupy. Help us to always remember that whatever he brings our way, we will occupy. And so we will fight with one hand as we continue building. We will fight with one hand as we continue to stand for the nations. We will fight with one hand as we continue to build our families. We will fight with one hand as we continue continue to build the church we will never stop the assignment of building just because warfare has come our way so teach us the skill baba of multitasking of still building even as we face warfare of not giving up of not feeling sorry for ourselves but to understand all of this is for the kingdom to expand the kingdom and so, Father, right now, I speak over everyone who is going through a difficult time that they will feel your peace that passeth all understanding so that they will pick up the sword and fight. 
because they are assured Jesus Christ finished at the cross and therefore they are in warfare just to claim their victory. Baba, I pray that warfare will teach us how to be more like you. Will teach us how to love you more. Will teach us that we can never run away from battle. That it is not the time to stumble and fall. But it is the time to stand up, put up the full armor and fight. And Father, I pray that we will continue to encourage each other. That when people are in warfare, we will not run away from them. We will not begin to try and discuss to understand why they might be going through warfare and come up with conspiracy. But we will stand with people while they are going through warfare. We will pray with them. We will love on them. Father, I pray that you will give us the strength that we will not be weary, but we will mount up with wings as eagles and rise even higher than before that we will see indeed you're raising the standards and that any battle that comes our way is not ours but yours so that we may experience Jehovah's Sabbath in whichever way warfare comes we will stand Give us the anointing and the strategy. This word, God, that you have given us from the book of Isaiah, this strategy, we hide it in our hearts. Anytime warfare comes, we will wait on you. We pray all these things, trusting and believing in your name. I can lead one worship song. Eh? You should see the minister Mani is saying yes. Anyway, worship team, please come take over. I will lead worship songs in heaven. I have a surprise in heaven for all of you. That is where I will lead with the help of angels. And by that time, God will have worked on my voice. Nani acha hivya mukuji?